Hello and welcome students. In the last video lecture, I had completed chapter number 1 of accountancy that is accounting and its terminology. Now in this video lecture, I am going to start with the second chapter of accountancy that is uh, dual effect of transactions and types of accounts. Students, in the last chapter, I had explained you two methods of accounting, that is Deshinama system and double entry system. Also, I discussed that presently in the Indian economy, most of the business units are maintaining their books of accounts as per double entry system. So, in this chapter, we are going to study what are the dual effect of transaction, what are the rules of debit and credit and what are the types of accounts that we are going to study in this chapter. So the first point that is given to you in your textbook that is meaning of business transaction. The first step for preparation of account is the creation of transaction and its identification. It means the first step for preparation of account is to have the transaction. If there is no transaction, then no any books of accounts is needed. And the next step after having the transaction, it is to be identified whether it is a economic transaction or non-economic transaction. No transaction, no accounts. If means if there is no any transaction, then no accounts is required. When the word transaction is used in accounting, it has to be business transaction. Always whenever the word transaction is utilized in accounting, it means it should be business related transaction. It should not be any personal transaction with our friends or relatives. It has to be economic transaction of business. Already we discussed that non-economic transactions are not to be recorded in the books of accounts. Economic transaction should have monetary value. Only those transactions which in which money is exchanged in return, that type of transactions only will be recorded in the books of accounts. Next, business transaction can be in cash or in credit form. Also, we have discussed that business transactions or economic transactions can be both cash transactions or credit transactions. Both cash and credit are considered as economic transactions and they are to be recorded in the books of accounts. Business transactions can be internal, business transaction can be external. Now, what is internal and external, we'll understand later on. Now, what is the meaning of business transaction? Business transaction means the exchange of product or services of business for cash and or on credit between two or more than two persons. It means business transaction is a dealing or exchange of product or any kind of service. Either it may be by cash or it may be on credit between two persons or more than two two persons again repeating it is an exchange of product or services either it may be by cash or credit between two persons or more than two persons to understand the precise meaning of transaction the explanation of the above mentioned matter is given below this explanation is given on the basis of transaction classification classification of business transaction we have already discussed that there are basically two types of transactions that are economic transactions and non-economic transactions. The classification of business transaction explains types of business transaction and their characteristics. With the help of classification, difference between business transaction and non-business transactions can be understood. It means which are business transactions and which are non-business transactions we can understand with the help of classification. Only business economic transactions are recorded in the books. Non-economic transactions are not recorded in the books. Any of the transactions in which monetary value is not gained or not given, then that type of transactions are called non-economic transactions and they will not be recorded in the books of accounts. Uh, now, over here, first one is given economic transactions, cash or credit transaction viewpoint, that is cash transaction, credit transaction or any other transaction. Suppose we are purchasing the goods on cash, then in, in uh, return of the goods, uh, in, we have purchased the goods worth rupees 5000, then we have to pay rupees 5000 in cash, then that is considered as a cash transaction. But suppose we have purchased a machinery worth rupees 50,000 and that payment we are doing after six months then for six months that transaction becomes a 
credit transaction and the third one that is other transaction in which there is no cash or credit but there is exchange of goods in return of goods then that type of transactions are also considered as economic transaction next one that is internal or external transaction viewpoint that is internal transaction and external transaction in a chart is also given to you that is non economic transaction in which there are uh, following is the presentation in tabular form that is business transaction that are having economic and non economic transactions economic transaction is further classified into cash or credit transaction and internal or external transactions in cash or credit transaction there are three sub categories that is that is cash transaction credit transaction and other transaction and internal and external transaction the two different categories are internal transaction and external transaction will understand one by one all the types of transaction first of all let us understand economic transactions only economic transactions of business are recorded in the books of business those business transactions the value of which can be measured in money form or cash transaction are or cash and where the exchange of money in cash is to be made immediately or in future is called economic transaction it means whether the payment is made immediately at the time of purchasing or selling or whether the payment is to be made after 6 months whether it's cash or credit transactions both are included in the category of economic transaction the transactions at present keeping the proposed exchange of money in future it means that amount of money we have to pay in future which create a relation of debtor or creditor we have already discussed that if we are selling the goods on credit then uh, after 6 months for 6 months Uh, if we are not paying that money then data uh, data relation is being arised data creditor relation is being arised so because of the credit transaction the data and creditor relations are being created so uh, whether it's cash transaction or credit transactions both are uh, considered in the category of economic transactions and they are to be recorded in the books of accounts there are two important aspects of economic transaction exchange of cash for assets goods or services and the second one that is creation of relationship of debtor creditor for assets goods or services if it is a cash transaction then naturally there would be exchange of cash in return of goods or in exchange of assets uh, exchange of assets in return of uh, cash uh, and the second one there would be creation of relationship of debtor or creditor if it is a credit transaction then relation of debtor creditor will be created between both the parties still the payment is made to the uh, another party so debtor creditor, creditor relation would be created in case of economic transaction if it is a credit transaction out of these two conditions if one condition is fulfilled the transaction can be measured in terms of money and consequently that transaction becomes economic transaction out of this about two condition if any of the one condition is also fulfilled whether it's cash or credit then it, that type of transaction is having a monetary value and it will be recorded in the books of accounts the core characteristics of an economic transaction is its value in money the main characteristic or the core main important characteristic of economic transaction is that its value should be measured in terms of money Uh, for example here it is given radheshyam is in business of furniture manufacturing he purchased wood costing rupees 30000 this transaction is the transaction of business of radheshyam he has purchased wood costing he is having the business of furniture manufacturing and he has purchased wood costing rupees 30000 so this transaction is a business transaction for radheshyam this transaction will be recorded by radheshyam in his books economic transaction can be classified as mentioned below that is cash or credit transaction from the viewpoint that is cash transaction credit transaction and cash transaction for goods cash transaction for services now cash transaction can be of any type whether it may be transaction related to assets related to goods or related to services cash transaction for assets in this category asset is purchased by the payment of money or money is realized by the sale of assets suppose your example is given furniture worth rupees 10000 is purchased for business so in return of the asset we have to pay the money so there is it's, it's called a cash transaction for purchase of assets in the same way cash transaction for goods 
here example is given to you goods worth rupees 15000 is purchased in cash if we are purchasing goods we are getting goods worth rupees 15000 then in return we have to make payment of rupees 15000 in cash so it is cash transaction for goods next third one that is cash transaction for services cash is paid for acquired services or cash is received for provided service example salary of rupees 12000 paid to employee then employee is giving the service so in return of his service we are paying the salary to him so whatever the salary we are paying that is in the form of cash so cash transaction for service in the same way brokerage that we are receiving uh, if we are doing any kind of uh, work of a brokerage then in return of that work we are getting the brokerage if we are a broker and we are doing uh, the work of a broker uh, then in return of our deal or contract we are getting the brokerage so whatever the brokerage in return of the service of brokerage in return of the service as a broker we are getting the amount of uh, cash for our service that is rupees 9000 so it is cash transaction for services note here the meaning of service is in business transaction when money is paid or received in exchange for the work except physical asset they are treated as service thus here the meaning of service is different here in this business transaction the meaning of service is different when money is paid or received in exchange for the work except physical asset it means any kind of physical asset that we are purchasing then it is not considered as the transaction related to service but if any kind of uh, uh, any kind of service suppose salary uh, employee is providing his own efficiency in the firm then he is getting salary for his service so that type of uh, services will be included in the category in the meaning of service next fourth point that is transaction for receivable or payables any amount which is outstanding to pay for assets goods or service acquired in the past is known as payable suppose we have purchased a machinery worth rupees 50000 and that 50000 we had given the guarantee to pay after 6 months so it would be a payable for us after 6 months right so that becomes payable these are paid in present any amount which is outstanding to receive for assets goods or services provided in the past is called receivable it means suppose we have uh, sold the goods worth rupees 50000 to any of the party any of the customer and he has given the guarantee on credit and he has given the guarantee to pay after 6 months so that amount which we have to receive from that customer after 6 months that for that 6 months it will become our receivable because in future that amount we have to receive from that third party from that customer so at present it becomes our receivable these are received in present example the outstanding payment of rupees 3000 for goods purchased from ramila is made the goods worth rupees 4000 was sold to rashmi the outstanding amount is received in cash it means outstanding means whatever the payment was remaining to be done that is called outstanding for goods purchased from ramila we had purchased goods of rupees 3000 from ramila and that payment was outstanding so that is called the uh, amount that is payable okay the goods worth rupees 4000 was sold to rashmi the outstanding amount is received in cash now whatever the amount uh, we have sold the goods worth rupees 4000 to rashmi so while selling the goods worth rupees 4000 to rashmi he has not she has not paid the amount at that particular time so it becomes a credit transaction so that amount becomes payable Uh, so that amount becomes receivable for us in future so that is called the outstanding amount to be received in cash note instead of cash transaction if transaction are made through checks that is by bank that is also included in cash transaction it means whether the payment is made by cash or by check both are considered as cash transactions and both can be recorded in the books of account
relationships. Next comes that is credit transaction. In this type of transaction, money is not paid immediately for purchase or sell transaction of assets, goods and services. Naturally, already we discussed that time period or credit period is given of 4 months, 6 months or say a year to make the payment at a future time period in order to increase the sale of its product. So most of the businessmen have to do the credit transactions in their business. Money for those purchase sale is to be made in future. However, exchange of assets, goods and services made in present. Uh, no doubt the money is not received at, a, at the present time when the uh, deal is being done between the two parties. But the concerned goods or assets is to be sold or purchased at that particular point of time. Suppose we have purchased the asset or machinery worth rupees 50,000 and we are not making the payment at the time of purchase. After six months, we are going to make the payment. So at present, uh, we'll get the asset for our utilization. It, it means we can utilize that machinery, but payment will make after six months. So uh, from this, the transaction relation of debtor or creditor comes into existence. So naturally, if we have sold the goods to any of the third party on credit, then it they becomes our debtor from whom we have to receive the money in future. In the same way, if we have purchased the goods on credit, then they become our creditors from to whom we have to pay the money in future okay so in brief purchase sales of assets goods services are made in present but their money is payable or receivable in future for example it is given to you goods worth rupees 4000 is sold to kalpana on credit we have sold the goods to kalpana on credit so kalpana becomes the data one thing make it sure or remember that students with sales always data relation will be created and with purchase always creditors will be created so kalpana becomes data we have sold the goods to kalpana so kalpana becomes the data and business becomes creditor and we who is who are handling the business or who is the owner of the business becomes the creditor for kalpana goods worth rupees 6000 is purchased from dipika on credit if we have purchased the goods on credit then that customer becomes the creditor it means over here dipika has purchased the goods on credit so dipika becomes the creditor and we the owner of the business becomes the dater okay so with purchase uh, with credit purchase always creditor will be there and with credit sales always the customer would be data for us so when the data relation or creditor relation will arise that you have to remember Next one comes that is other transaction. Now what are included in other transaction? We discussed that there are cash transaction, credit transaction. Now what are other transactions? The transactions that do not fall in the above mentioned two types. It means they are neither cash transaction nor credit transaction. These are special transactions. Suppose examples are given to you. Goods destroyed in accident, theft of goods, goods given for donation, goods given for advertisement, assets turned defective or useless, etc. Now due to such... Uh, effect suppose goods are destroyed in any of the accident while transportation of goods or certain goods have been lost or theft has occurred of the goods or certain amount of goods we have given as charity or donation uh, then that type of transactions now not come in cash transactions or credit transactions but they are economic transactions and their value will be recorded in the books of accounts. So they are coming in the special category of other transaction. Next point that is internal or external transaction viewpoint. In that what are internal transactions and external transaction. In certain transactions there is no need of other parties. Internal means within the firm itself. These transactions would take place within the business. These transactions are recorded in the books of accounts. Example depreciation and asset, loss due to natural calamity etc. These are all economic transactions but are non-cash transactions because there is no uh, giving or taking of cash in such type of transaction. Suppose we are counting, uh, we have machinery worth rupees 1 lakh and every year we are calculating 10% depreciation 
on machinery then that amount of depreciation is considered as an expense or loss for the firm and that will be recording in the books of accounts but in that type of transaction the customer or dealing with the third party is not there so it is within the firm that's why it's called internal transaction next one that is external transaction these transactions are between business and other parties these are economic transactions of business these transactions are recorded in the books of accounts example sale of goods to customers payment of wages to workers interest received from bank and so on it means whatever the dealing with we, which we are doing with the third party outside the firm to the customers then that type of transactions are called external transactions if we are selling the goods to the customers if we are making the payment of salary or wages to our workers interest we are receiving commission we are receiving uh, paying the insurance premium then all these type of transactions where outside the firm we are dealing with the any of the third party or any of the customer then that type of transactions are called external transactions next come that is non economic transactions already we discussed this point that is non economic transactions are those transactions whose value cannot be measured in terms of money uh, okay uh, here example is also given to you an order is received to supply goods after one month at present we have just received the order no any dealing to supply the goods at that particular point of time so after one month only that transaction will be will become an economic transaction at present only order has been placed so it becomes a non economic transaction till actual uh, supply of goods has been done a meeting held with consultants for expansion of business so all these are examples of non economic transactions okay so that will not be recorded in the books of accounts now uh, based on after understanding what are economic transaction non economic transaction uh, cash transaction credit transaction internal and external transactions let us uh, understand the illustration number 1 of your textbook that is describe whether the following transactions are economic or non economic transaction and clarify the reason for it you have to just uh, clarify whether it's economic or non economic and why it is economic or why it is non economic it means reason for economic or non economic transaction the first transaction that is given to you assets purchased for rupees 10000 you have purchased the asset worth rupees 10000 then naturally you have to make the payment for it so it is a economic transaction okay so you can see and the answer also illustration is there so answer is also given to you the first transaction that was assets purchased worth rupees 10000 so in the table tab tabular form the transaction whether it's economic or non economic and the the third column that is the reason has also been specified so directly i'm moving on to the answer only the first transaction that is assets purchased for rupees 10000 so naturally it's an economic transaction because cash is paid against asset second one that is assets purchased from radha for rupees 12000 on credit uh, we have purchased the asset worth rupees 12000 from radha on credit we are already discussed that even though it is a credit transaction it will be considered as a economic transaction so it is coming in the category of economic transaction and relation of debtor creditor will be arised if it is a credit transaction okay third one that is asset sold for rupees 20000 we have sold the asset for rupees 20000 so cash will be released from realized uh, from the selling of the asset so it is an economic transaction and cash is received reason is given to you that is cash is received against asset uh, the fourth transaction that is asset sold to Mira for rupees 22,000 on credit. So we have sold the goods or asset on credit. So even though it's a credit, it's an economic transaction. So relation of debtor or creditor is arised. Fifth transaction that is rupees 8,000 paid for wages. We have paid. So economic transaction related to business. So it is an economic transaction and uh, we have paid the cash for the service that is we have paid the wages for in return of the service that employee has provided in the business. So it's an economic transaction. 
next one that is rupees 9000 received for rent we have received rupees 9000 for rent uh, it means any of our property we have given on rent and uh, for providing our property on rental basis we are getting the rent so that is also cash received against our service against our rental service so it's an economic transaction seventh one that is liability of rupees 15000 is settled it means previously we had to make the payment of rupees 15000 but at that time we had not the payment made the payment of rupees 15000 so in future that became our payable that became our liability so now we are settling that liability and making that payment of rupees 15000 so that is the business related transaction that's why liability is paid in cash that's why it becomes an economic transaction receivable of rupees 18000 is received whatever the amount which we had to receive from the data that we had received now of rupees 18000 so again it becomes an economic transaction uh, so because receivable which was to be received from the third party or from the data that is now received in cash ninth one that is an order is received to supply goods of rupees 10,000 now over here again uh, we are discussing the same type of transaction that it is a non-economic transaction because here only order is received we have not yet supplied the goods so it is neither cash transaction nor establishes relation of debtor and creditor here we have not sold the goods just the order has been received to supply the goods so it is not a credit not neither cash transaction nor credit transaction tenth one a planning is to make is to is made to buy one asset just a planning is made still we have not purchased that asset so that also becomes a non-economic transaction because it's neither cash nor credit transaction eleventh one that is to enhance sales for discussion uh, to enhance sales for discussion a meeting is arranged with salesmen just a meeting is arranged so there is no any uh, purchase or sale or any kind of business related transaction Mon monetary value is not generated because of such meeting so again it becomes a non-economic transaction because neither cash nor any kind of data credit or relation has been arised because of such meeting so these are this was the first illustration in which we had to just identify where whether a particular transaction is economic or non-economic and specify the reason why it is economic or non-economic transaction okay so uh, that's all for today students uh, in the next video lecture will be understanding the further illustrations of this chapter till then goodbye keep practicing stay blessed